The first thing I want to mention is that these questions do carry on. So on the next slide, we've got 8.3 and 8.4, and then we've got those questions over there. I just couldn't fit everything onto one slide, otherwise we won't have enough space for the writing. The table below shows two half cells, A and B, used to assemble an electrochemical cell under standard conditions. State the energy conversion that takes place in the cell. Now, an electrochemical, that is, we have different names for that. We, some of us might have heard it as galvanic. That's the one I usually use when I explain it to students. Uh, we call it a galvanic. So, yeah, maybe you haven't seen electrochemical as well, but that's, yeah, I don't see them using the word electrochemical too much, but that's another word for galvanic. So we should know that a galvanic cell takes chemical energy and then converts it into electrical energy. If it was a electrolytic cell, then it would be the opposite. Then you would start with the battery, which is the electrical, and then you would convert that into chemical. This is a very interesting one. Calculate the mass of silver nitrate used to prepare 150 centimeters of the electrolyte solution in half cell B. Now I can guarantee you that a lot of learners who would have written this exam or test, um, they would have looked at this and been like, dude, like seriously, we only have the volume. Like we don't have any other information. Ah, but they said standard conditions. We should remember that these half cells that we get on our table, you know, table 4A, table 4B, those conditions are concentrations that is always going to be one mole per decimeter. Yes, there's also temperature concentration, I mean, temperature conditions and pressure conditions. But with concentrations, what we've learned is that all of the concentrations must be one mole per decimeter. So then we could use our formula C equals to N over V, and we could work out the moles of silver nitrate. Remember, though, this must be converted into uh, decimeters. So 150 centimeter cube is the same as 0 0.15 decimeters. Okay, so we can say that the concentration is one, and then the number of moles we don't know, and the um, volume would be 0 0.15. By the way, some of you might prefer to use this formula. I do see that a lot of learners use that. There's nothing wrong with that. You can also use that one. I just prefer to do it with this one. Um, now, if we had to go work out the number of moles, we'd get 0 0.15. So therefore, 0 0.15 moles of silver nitrate. Okay, so now what we can go and do is we can go use the formula N equals to M over capital M. And now here's where you would need your periodic table. So you could go find the mass of silver, nitrogen, and oxygen. So if you look at your periodic table, we'd know that uh, silver is 108, uh, nitrogen is 14, and then oxygen would be 16. So if we had to say uh, 0, 0,15, and then the mass, we don't know, and then for the molar mass, you would say um, silver plus nitrogen, and then three oxygens, so that would be 16 times three. And then we could say 0, 0,15 equals to mass over, this would actually become 170, and then if we had to go work out the mass, you would end up with 25,5, and then this would be in grams. This question says, define the term reducing agent. Okay, so before we get into the proper definition, um, I just wanna remind you guys something, that there's this weird thing that happened since grade 11, okay? It's been happening since grade 11. So we can say that the substance, this is not the answer, hey? This is just me explaining something. So the substance that is oxidized so the substance that is oxidized is called a reducing agent. This has been confusing learners for so long now. Um, the substance that is oxidized is called a reducing agent because it reduces other things, okay? And then, and then the substance that is reduced is called an oxidizing agent agent. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you guys about that, but now let's go get the proper definition. Oh, the proper definition is actually quite boring. Uh, we can literally just say a substance that is 
oxidized. Next one, write down the name or formula of the reducing agent. Okay, so we gotta go find these two things on that table now. And now remember that I typically show table 4B. Well, I always show table 4B. Whereas some of you, maybe one out of every 50 of you, may be using table 4A at school, okay? In my six, to, okay, I shouldn't actually say how long I've been teaching because in a few years from now, that would be different. But I've been teaching for quite a while and I've only ever seen students using table 4A like once. Uh, most schools use table 4B. So there I've gone and isolated parts of table 4B. So we've got the copper reaction. Now please remember guys, just above here um, on the table, there's other copper reactions, but we're looking for the one that has copper two plus and copper. And then we've got AG plus and AG. So I've got those here at the bottom, okay? And then I also went and included those arrows that I've showed in previous lessons. So it says write down the name or formula of the reducing agent. Okay, so remember the way I showed you guys the way the arrows work. So you always look for the one that's higher up on the right hand side. So that would be that. This is only if you're using table 4B, right? Um, and then you look for the one that's lower down on the left hand side. And there we have it because you wouldn't choose this one because this one's lower down. So we have the AG plus and we have the copper. So then what happens is that we start with this one. So it goes that way, okay? And then we start with this one and it goes that way. So we should know from our oil rig acronym that this is an oxidation reaction when it goes in that direction. So this is oxidation. And then this is a reduction reaction when it goes in that direction. Okay, so it says name or formula of the reducing agent. Now, in the previous question, or actually in this one, yeah, we said that a reducing agent is the substance that is oxidized. So we come up to the oxidation reaction and we see which substance is oxidized. Well, it's always the thing that you start with. So that would be copper. Some students would say copper two plus, but that would be marked incorrect. Uh, it has to be very specific, it's copper. So you could say Cu or you could say copper. Then they want us to find the balanced equation. So they're talking about the overall reaction. So what we can do is we can write out the two reactions. So Ag plus plus one electron gives you Ag and then copper, the copper reaction. But now you must write it in the correct order. So this one's going this way. So we say copper becomes copper two plus plus two electrons. Okay, now we need to put these two reactions together. So remember to do that, these electrons need to be balanced. So what we'll need to do is multiply this silver reaction, this one over here, we're gonna have to multiply that by two, okay? So we're gonna times this one by two. So that's gonna be, end up becoming two Ag plus plus two electrons gives us Ag. Now I'm just gonna write the other one underneath, copper becomes copper two plus plus two electrons. Okay, so now we can add these two reactions um, together. So you literally just add them together, so it becomes 2Ag plus plus copper. You see what I'm doing? I'm adding everything that's on the left of the arrow. So that's this and this. I'm not adding the electrons because they are going to cancel out. And then on the other side, it would be silver plus Cu2 plus. Calculate the initial EMF. So we know that the formula for EMF is the value at your cathode minus the value at your anode, okay? So we already, okay, well earlier on, uh, we said that this was the reduction reaction and we said that this one here was your oxidation. We also know that reduction goes with cathode and oxidation always is always going with anode. And that whether you have an electrolytic cell or a galvanic cell, that's always true. So to work out the, or, or, or to do this formula, so we need the value at the cathode. So we just look at the value at the cathode, which is 0 0.8 minus, and then we look at the value at the anode, which is 0 0.34, and that's it. You just go minus those two, and that's gonna give you 0 0,465. 
volts. For this next question, it says, how will the EMF of the cell be affected if the concentration of copper ions increases? Okay, so what we need for this is the previous question's answer, which was uh, 2 Ag plus plus copper gave us 2 Ag plus copper 2 plus. Okay, so that was from our previous answer. Now, all that you do in a question like this is you use Le Chatelier's principle, okay? Remember that this is the pure copper, that's pure copper, and this here is your copper iron. An iron is anything that has um, a charge. So, it says here, how the EMF of the cell be affected if the concentration of the copper iron is increased? Okay, so if you increase this, think about the way equilibrium works. If you increase this one, then the system will try to decrease that. So how will it do that? By, will it go in the forward direction? No, it won't go in the forward direction, because if it goes in the forward direction, then this will become even more. So it will actually go in the reverse direction. Okay, so it's gonna go in the reverse direction, and so the amount of um, copper two plus well, yeah, it would go in the reverse direction to try and make less copper 2 plus. So because it's going to go in the reverse direction, your EMF is going to decrease. So e I'll explain something to you guys now. EMF will decrease. Uh, so we should choose that one. Um, because the way it works, if you go forward, if you go forward, then the EMF increases. If you go reverse, then your EMF decreases. 